So what's up guys, Emily here with Jeff. We're talking about dating as an Asian man in America today. And Jeff, you had some amazing thoughts and kind of notes about this. Um, I know we had, we had shared a, a video by the Fung brothers about their perspective on dating as an Asian man and, and different aspects of that that are really important. So I would love to hear your thoughts on that. I know you, you had a really great example of like um, sitting at the right table and, and what you learned about that through poker and how that relates to um, this topic. So can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So around 2015, I was uh, getting really into poker. So I was studying it a lot, uh, spending my weekends going to the casinos, playing a lot. And one of the things I learned in poker is that a uh, table selection is basically one of the most important decisions you can make because table selection will meet will determine whether you're going to be profitable or not playing poker. And and the idea is is that if you are playing at a table where everybody is great or you have no edge, you have no like competitive advantage, you're not going to make money no matter how good you are. So mm -hmm. I found that this like when I played poker, I learned this and I found that it actually applies to dating, especially as not just even as an Asian male, but whether you're short or you feel like you have some sort of deficiency is that uh, in many, many times you can be, be playing at a more difficult table. Uh, like one example of that is I did live in San Francisco for about three or four years. And, you know, generally there are more men than, than women there. And I am working in tech and I am in, in a way competing against others that are working in tech. And in a way, I don't have as much of an edge similar to that edge that you want as a poker table. I definitely dated and it's it's definitely kind of a, uh, I definitely like met a lot of people, but I, I think that it's important as not just an Asian man, but anything in, in dating and career is to find tables where you do have an edge and you do have, an, have, have a competitive advantage and that actually will allow you to be more successful. Mm, I love that. And so comparing San Francisco to New York, because there are more women than men in New York, and they, those women are like, a lot of them are in fashion. And so they probably dress really nice. Mm -hmm. Have you found that it's like playing a table where you have a big advantage in New York? Absolutely. So I would say definitely say in New York, much easier has been much easier for me to get dates. Uh, I do think I have better pictures just from like working on it, being here, but, and also being a little bit older, but I would say, yeah, definitely a lot easier to get dates. Uh, definitely uh, would say the table, yeah, the table in New York is a lot easier. I love it. And so as an Asian man in America, mm -hmm. how can people stack? Well, it's not stacking the deck. I don't even know these. I'm learning about poker through this too. So thank you <laughs> because I play poker as well. Um, but how can an Asian man like, in general, really make sure they're sitting at a table that's going to benefit them in dating. So there's a lot of those, those typical ways of meeting women, which is going to bars, going to loud clubs, uh, using like dating apps. And I would say as an Asian man, uh, if you're going to play that game, uh, and, you know, this is a generalization, of course, there's some Asian men who are very successful or a lot taller, et cetera. But in general, I would say, that using those traditional ways are not necessarily stacking the deck in your favor. Uh, I would say like as an Asian man, my general approach, so I don't want to say like everybody needs to be doing this, but my general approach is to figure out the things where I have a special advantage in and where I can actually shine a lot more. So for example, I would say that I love teaching and I didn't actually do this to meet women, but I was vo a volunteer teacher for Girls in Tech where I was uh, teaching Python and teaching SQL. So I, I personally like teaching. I, it, it's something that I find fulfilling. Uh, somebody asked me to volunteer and I just volunteered. And, and that would actually be an uh, example of a setting where say I'm the teacher, so I'm essentially the leader. Literally everyone in the room is women. And I, I have a bit of a competitive advantage since you know the ratio is in my favor. I'm also in a, a position of leadership. I'm the one, the kind of more knowledgeable person in that room. That would be an example of, hey, this is an area where I do, and I actually like teaching, so I do have a competitive advantage in that environment. Uh, a place where I probably don't have as much of a competitive advantage is I don't really play golf. I'm not great at it. If I tried to go meet women playing golf, I, I might be able to meet people. Like I can just talk to them and have good conversations. 
but uh, I'm not good at it. So it doesn't, I, I, it doesn't show off. Like it doesn't give me an extra boost by playing golf. So those are a couple examples I could think of uh, off the bat for, for me personally. Yeah. I love that. I think leadership is so sexy, no matter what you would, I can't count the number of professors that I had crushes on that were not even attractive, but they were so charismatic mm -hmm. because they really loved mm -hmm. what they did and, and they were standing in front of a crowd and that's really demonstrating leadership, which is a huge component in attractiveness for women or what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, something that you said earlier in, in our notes back and forth um, was how you kind of view, you view this similarly as women who are late bloomers. Um, mm -hmm. who really didn't have the looks to begin with and maybe develop the looks later. And so they had to really work on their personality and develop this side of themselves to kind of not, mm -hmm. I don't know, make up for or to to leverage that to kind of become more attractive. And I can relate a lot because mm -hmm. I grew up as the chubby kind of mousy looking kid and didn't really know how to do the makeup side of things. And so um, for me, it was mm -hmm. really about learning how to develop a sense of humor uh, you know, and, and mm -hmm. all of that. Um, how does that relate to your surfing story? So, so like being a, so I would, how does it relate to my surfing story? So, uh, okay. Yeah. I'll tackle it in two parts. So I would say first, like, I think that a lot of everything we're saying here, I, I mean, I'm a guy, so I'm talking about it from the perspective of guys, trying to attract women, but I actually think it applies vice versa. Like for women who want to attract guys, they want to put it themselves in a place where they have an edge, they have a competitive advantage. And I would say like the reason why I kind of relate to the, the late bloomer idea is that I felt like I was a late bloomer. And I felt like, you know, when I was say in high school, say when I was in early college, wasn't considered quote unquote cool or one of the popular kids. So that actually in a way, uh, lit a fire under me to actually continue to keep developing and becoming better as a person. And now, you know, I'm not trying to be better to like attract women. I'm just trying to be better because it, I find that fulfilling and I, I really enjoy the process of improvement. And I think to tie that in with surfing, I only started surfing maybe in 2018 and kind of in line with this theme of becoming a better person. I just, I just fell in love with it. And my goal in say 2021 was just to get as good as I possibly could at surfing. So I, I just worked at it, you know, got a coach, you know, fine tuned different aspects of the skill. And I got pretty good at it to the point where I was probably the best surfer at Waikiki. And in terms of like, when you are the best at a skill relative to everybody else, it may, it does give you a little more status. It does make you look better relative to everyone. And then I found many, many girls were interested in me. So I think the moral of this is that uh, you can, like, basically, if you don't feel like right now you are attractive to women or you're not attracting the girls that you want, uh, you can use it to your advantage where you are actually going to focus on making yourself a better person and uh, continuing to grow and continue to get better at the things that you love doing. And then as you get better, you will actually start to create that competitive advantage for yourself. And, and then when you do it, like say over multiple years, there's no way people can catch up. So it's like, if you've been like learning surfing or whatever skill you want for like four years, for somebody who doesn't know it, it's going to take them at least, you know, a few years to catch up to you. So that that's a little hard. It's like in business, you want to have this uh, competitive advantage with your product. It's like, it's like a very similar thing. So um, yeah, that's what I'd say there. So yeah, I was able to kind of tie, tie all those things together. Yeah. I love it. Such a good, such good points. Um, I know that you mentioned like as dating as an Asian man, you feel like the bar is higher. You have to earn more money and there's negative cultural mm -hmm. um, American preferences mm -hmm. towards Asian men um, mm -hmm. and that you're sitting at a more difficult table. And this mm -hmm. resonates with me as a woman, because I feel I can relate a lot to that. But can you expound upon that a little bit and, and share with me why you think that is the case and why is the, why is it an unfair playing field? Yeah, I think I, I read like an OkCupid okay study. I'm sure you've read this as well, where there was something around men's height where I can't remember the exact numbers, but for Asian men, like the for every inch, it's like, like, I don't know, something thousand dollars. So they need to make, if they're like one inch shorter, they need to make X amount of more dollars to like make it naturally even. So I, I think anecdotally from my experience, I would say that 
when I've traveled abroad, especially in like, say Europe, I've noticed that there, you know, women, women of all races are interested in me. But then I've noticed that in the US, specifically say like white Caucasian females are less interested in Asian men. Uh, so, so that kind of tells me that from my own experience that mm, there's something, there's some kind of difference here. Cause it's not really like their, their race. It's like something cultural between the U S Europe and, and the rest of the world. Uh, so that I, I did notice that from my own experience, I, I have some theories. So I, I do think that Asian men in Western slash American culture, uh, were not historically portrayed in a very masculine, uh, strong position. So like examples I can think of are say like Ken Jeong and say like those comedy movies, mm -hmm. he's portrayed as the kind of more weaker Asian man where people can make jokes on kind of step over. So in a way that might be creating some kind of cultural perception that Asian men are weaker. I, I think it's starting to change with like some of the new movies coming out, like um, what's it called? The, the Shang-Chi, the, the Marvel movie. So it, it is, the perception is changing a little bit, but that, it's something I did notice uh, with comparing the U.S. culture and Europe. Yeah, that's actually a common thread. I've met with two other people on this topic, and yeah. every one of them said that they traveled outside of the country and had a completely different experience. Mm -hmm. so that's, it, would that be a way of stacking the deck or sitting at the right table is maybe looking outside of the states, mm -hmm. state, and just having that experience too? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it could be looking outside the states. I mean, I've I've met some girls who are international in New York City as well. So if you're in like a big metropolitan area, you can stack. Like I I noticed that they they are interested in me more here as well. So there's uh you can meet people in the city that you live in. You could also go outside the United States as well, uh, to stack the deck in your favor. And um, yeah, I think uh yeah, that's what I'd say. Interesting. Yeah, I think that's really interesting that across the board, all three of you guys said the same thing there. So really mm -hmm. fascinating. And for guys who are watching this, who maybe have never thought of that or have explored outside of the country, I think that's an interesting thing to think about. Um, anything else that you want to share, you think it would be helpful for viewers to know? For like dating as an Asian man? I mean, yeah, one of the things that I always think about is like, you know, we're to go back to poker, uh, let's say that like when you when you do get dealt to hand, it's it's really about how you play that hand versus like, you know, you, you can't really control the the hand that you're really dealt. So in a way, even as an Asian guy, even if I think there's many Asian guys who are, are probably frustrated with dating and they're frustrated with, you know, people not being as interested in them compared to say somebody who's, you know, taller, white, Caucasian. Uh, the way I would kind of look at that is, you know, we are only dealt the hand that we are dealt so we have to play the hand the best that we can and you know I, I do think that luckily as a guy women are in my opinion less shallow than, than men are like men care a lot more about looks than women are so if you could develop your confidence develop career success uh develop your your charisma uh those those things are all trainable like it's harder it's harder to, tr to change your looks but it's easier to train the things that women like. So it's it's not like the de the deck is, the cards are fully against you and you're not really playing at a really poor table. So yeah, I would say like, it's all malleable. You can, you can get better. You can make yourself more attractive. You can build your confidence. And uh, yeah, I think it's always, it's all possible. So um, yeah, and we can't really change whether we're Asian or not. So uh, you can just focus on the things that you can control. Yeah. I love that. I love that so much. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me about this subject. I think it's so important that we have this dialogue and that we start raising awareness around this because really there's no difference, right? I mean, maybe some cultural mm -hmm. differences, but there's really no difference. And, you know, my word to viewers would be if you have never tried dating outside of your race, it's it's an interesting experiment to, to mm -hmm. just see what it, what it is like, what is the experience and to challenge any prior assumptions, you know, because sometimes mm -hmm. we think, uh, we have this bias, but we really, I recommend proving it wrong, proving it wrong, proving it right, whatever it is. But if you don't understand why you've maybe never dated a certain race, um, giving it a try and having that experimental mindset and like, okay, why do I think that I'm not attracted to somebody outside of my race or somebody of this race and whatnot? Because mm -hmm. our perceptions are a lot of times 
coming from media influences or parents who maybe were taught something, even, you know, generations before who were taught something that maybe is just not all of the facts, right? So cool. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you can resonate with this and you have something to say about this topic, we'd love to hear about it in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time.